that's true. Mm-hmm. Let's go to the Lord in prayer right quick. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you do for all of us, God. And Lord, you, Lord, just let this message come and let it be a help to somebody, God. And let this be a light to somebody, God, Lord. Let the Holy Ghost just come in and take over. And not let me come and preach the message. But let your spirit just come in, God, just yes, overflow, Lord, God, just God. take over the place and just begin to move all over the areas, Lord. Wherever they're listening, wherever they're watching that, God, we just honor and glorify your name. And we yes, give Lord. you glory and praise and honor in Jesus' name, Lord. We thank you. Amen and amen. 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 Oh, I was going to preach on John 14 and 1. And then I was going to preach on Leviticus chapter 20. And then... How many knows that a third time is a charm? A yep. third time is a charm. So when I was uh, praying in the spirit, the Lord just popped in the spirit about two days ago. Thus on Numbers chapter 12. And I'm like, God, okay, you want me to preach on John 14, 1, an easy message <laughs> Let not your heart be troubled. Mm-hmm. Now that's an easy message right there, John mm-hmm. 14, 1. And then Leviticus 20. It's, it's hard. Leviticus 20 is. If yep. you ain't ready for it, I don't know what to tell you. Leviticus 20 is hard. Mm-hmm. But then I uh, you all may be about to get a reality check. Because <laughs> oh, I got news for you. If you thought Leviticus 20 was bad, not Numbers 12. Let me just say Numbers 12 is, let let me read the verses right quick. Let's go to Numbers 12. That is where I'm going to be reading from. Numbers chapter 12. You'll find out in a minute. (laughs) And us ministers and preachers and pastors, I'm sure all of us would love to preach easy messages at times. Where we could just... Come in and just preach the word. Have a good old saying. Hey, Jesus loves you. God loves you. And we give you glory and praise. And the Lord will accept you into heaven. But it's not like that at times. It sure ain't. So, Mom, I'm going to have I'm going to read the odd verses. And I want you to read the even verses. And we can share a mic together. Since we're good like that, we can share a mic together. (laughs) (laughs) And for everybody that is able, stand up for the reading of God's Word. His niece found it, yeah. Oh, well, amen. Praise the Lord. (laughs) We're going to do some tag team preaching tonight. See? That's something I didn't know nothing about. (laughs) Not really, just reverse. So that way, if y'all get mad at me, Y'all get mad at her at the same time, too. <laughs> so, I'm going to start reading Numbers 12, 1 through 16. Okay. And Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were, upo- which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and to Aaron and to Miriam, Come out, ye three, unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all of my house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak? against my servant Moses. And the anger of the Lord was hidden against him, and he departed. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle. And behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said to Moses, Elias, 
My Lord, I, be, I beseech thee, beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, whether we have done foolishly and whether we have sinned. How far is it? Okay. Let her not be as one dead of whom the flesh is half consumed when he cometh out of his mother's womb. And Moses cried to the Lord, saying, Heal her now, O God, I beseech you. And the Lord said unto Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut off from the camp seven days, and after that, let her be received in again. And Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days, and the people journeyed not till Miriam was brought in again. And afterward the people removed from Hazaroth and pitched in the wilderness of Paran. Could you read verse number one for me, please? And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to need you to say the very last part of the verse again. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. Yeah. Thank you, thank uh -huh. you. I gotta take my glasses off for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't I tell you it was gonna be a hard message? I, 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 I told you. This right here is a pun punishment message for everybody. <laughs> so, if you do not want to get punishment, if you don't want to get punished, <laughs> you got 10 seconds to leave the floor right now. <laughs> But, but, but this punishment is not for the church. It's for the people that come against the church, that come against the people of God. Mm -hmm. And so, if there, if there was a title to be on this message, I'm not going to keep y'all long. I'm not going to preach. But can I just speak for, can I just say some stuff for just a little bit? Mm -hmm. The message, the title of the message is going to be the punishment of mocking spirits. Mm -hmm. Now, you must be questioning yourself, why is the title The Punishment of Mocking Spirits? Mocking spirits can be a whole lot of things. You can mock, there's a lot of spirits you can mock. You can mock the Spirit of God. You can mock the Holy Ghost coming into the church. You can mock somebody that's trying to relay a message to the church or you can mock or make fun of somebody who's trying to get the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Now there's three subjects we're going to be talking about tonight and I'm not going to keep you all long. I'm going to keep you all for about five hours if y'all don't mind. <laughs> but in all references it's going to be about 15 to 20 minutes. <laughs> so three subjects I'm going to get to. I'm going to do a fast pace. We're going to be starting off with don't mess with the colors of the rainbow. Why we all need to come together and don't let God turn against you. Now, you know, back in the slavery days when they, uh, well, before the slavery days, let me take it back to the years 1400s to the 1500s. Everybody came together. Everybody was together. But then when we get to the 1600s, around the mid part of the 1600s, then we start to see a lot of things change in the world. We start to see things not come together. We start to see people being separated. And in the 1600s, you know, back when uh, they had the country, Africa, when they had the Africans, mm -hmm. and they all was together. Mm -hmm. Well, truth to be honest, a lot of people... Now, now, this is a history lesson. For those of y'all that don't know, we're going to school. We're going to history and geography for just a little bit. Can I, go, can I do some history for a little bit? Uh -huh. yeah. Now, for those of y'all that don't know, we're about to get an old history lesson. Now, a lot of people think slavery started. A lot of people think that slavery came about. And a lot of people thought... That slavery all started was because different races was going against different races. Mm -hmm. In other words, white people was going against the black people. Mm -hmm. 
black people was going against the white people. Mm -hmm. Black people was going against the international people. White people was going against the international people. Mm -hmm. And I did not know this until about two years ago when they taught us this in school. Do you know how slavery started? Slavery, how, okay, raise your all's hands. How many of you all think that slavery started when the white man took the black man away from the country? Raise your hands yeah. if you believe yeah. that That's they started. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is mostly true. But let me tell you, that is not the actual real reason why slavery started. And they taught us this in history. The real reason why slavery started was back in Africa. You had the dark Africans and you had the light Africans. Uh -huh. Now, we all know when we come together as one, we have family, we have friends. But then one day, the dark African is just uh, doing his thing, is just uh, providing for his family and everything. And then the light brother Americans, they come over and they're all chilling and cool and everything. And all of a sudden, the dark African looks and, okay, there's a brother, a light brother. And then he sees and notices that there's another light brother and another light brother and another light brother. Mm -hmm. And they all was family. But when the dark African looked, he was outnumbered. Mm -hmm. And these, one was a brother, but the other three light brothers he did not notice. Mm -hmm. So when he turned around and looked, he was like, okay, I'm trapped here. And they had all kinds of weapons. So when the dark African saw the light brothers, the dark African just took off running. Mm -hmm. But somehow, we all know in movies right. when they trip and fall that somebody yeah. they get ready to get captured and get uh, killed. Get killed. <laughs> and all of a sudden the dark African when he went to run, he tripped and he fell. <laughs> just like flat his face. But when he looked and went to turn around and try to get up, the brothers already surrounded him and everything. Uh, uh -huh. And pretty much the brothers had a rope, they had chains, and they had everything to tie him down. Mm -hmm. But then, all of a sudden, the dark African notices, he's like, okay, what's going on here? I'm being surrounded. I'm being trapped. Mm -hmm. And then, don't you know, the white brothers, they sold and they sold out the dark Africans. Mm -hmm. They sold out the dark Africans yep. to the white men. They sold out mm -hmm. the dark Africans wow. to yep. those that had money. Yep. And I did not know that's how slavery started. But that's how slavery actually started. It wasn't on account of the white men. It was on account of the brothers and uh -huh. sisters turned their backs okay. on the own kind. Oh. And like that's what's, like yeah, like that. yeah, that's what's going on in the church today is we're turning on our brothers and sisters that's in right. Christ. Amen. We are turning on our brothers and sisters. And it is a shame yeah. of the gospel truth, unfortunately, that we as Christians... Or turn our backs, and we actually sometimes the sinners and backsliders help us more than our own brothers and sisters in Christ. Oh, yeah, Amen. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. true. And yeah. so when you have your own kind, your own family turn their back on you, right? Let me yeah. tell you something. A friend turned their back on you is one thing. A fan or associate turning back on you is one thing. Right. But to have your family turn back oh, on you oh, yeah. is another thing. Yeah. That's the hardest. That's the root yeah. of the heart. And that's y'all's history lesson for today is that their own kind yeah. turn their back turn their on the family. That is a shame of the gospel. Which yes. brings me to my first subject. Don't mess with the colors of the rainbow. Now, when I say don't mess with the colors of the rainbow, that means all kinds of things. Right. That means don't mess with the family of God. Don't mess with the children of God. Don't right. mess with the brothers and sisters of Christ. Don't mess with them by color. Don't mess with them by their uh, abilities to do things. Don't mm -hmm. mess with their disabilities. Don't mess with them how short they are, how tall they are. Right. Don't mess with how uh, much... Uh, Weight they have, don't mess with how much fancy cars or clothes they got, don't mess right. with how much money they got or how right. much money That's they right. don't get. Right, right. 
And that brings me to number two. Why we all need to come together. Now, it's very important that as brothers and sisters come together in Christ because when we all come together, we all get things done. Right. And like right. that ministers of meeting that I was talking about earlier, and they should not be an empty minister in the Tri-City area. No. All the Tri-City ministers should, should be there. Yeah. All the Tri-City ministers should come together. Right. They should bind together. Right. But instead of us, we are all divided together instead right. of being divided right. together. Amen. Which that's happening in our younger brothers and sisters' generations. Instead of them coming together, they're turning their back on each other because right. they see how we act. Right. They see how we are. So Amen. they thinking the they can do the same thing, but yet yeah. they're doing a whole lot worse than we're doing. Right. Yeah. And right. they are not going to be coming to the house of God because they see us brothers and sisters argue. They see right. us brothers and sisters being yeah. divided. Amen. So they're, they're saying, welcome. what is the use mm -hmm. of coming to the house of God? Where they're doing the same exact thing, right? Or when you let our, when the pastor lets a whole lot of stuff goes in the house of God, yeah. And especially when the Pentecost and Church of God, that is one of our biggest issues. Is we allow too much stuff to come into the house of God. Amen. We allow problems and That's situations true. to come into the house of God, and yeah. instead of dealing with them. We put stuff off to the side. Mm -hmm. Instead of uh, dealing with it right then and there, we let the cliques do whatever they want to do. Amen. That's and the truth. Instead of those, uh, instead of dealing with the problem, if they got money or whatever, oh, well, we'll just pay off the preacher or pastor. Yeah. And then that way, they can just continue about doing their own way. Yeah. In spite of that. Oh, yeah. Now, I... I let me just okay. Let me just ask: How many in here are basketball fans? Raise your hands. I raise both hands. <laughs> <laughs> now this, now this basketball. Me too. Now this relates to the colors of the rainbow. Is what I'm talking about. <laughs> now, let me let me just ask. Now, back in the now in the days in the NBA, who did you see or? Who did you hear get mentioned the most? The stars. You never heard any independent of people. You never heard any internationals. No, you never no heard one. of the nobodies or anybody right. that's poor. Mm -hmm. And why is it that you never heard any of the nobodies or never of the poor people or never of the internationals playing the NBA? Why? Because the stars were mentioned. And that's like in the church house. Right. That's like in the church house. I right. mean... You hear, we get put on a lot of pedestals, yep. especially the ones that <coughs> want to sing the most, the ones that want to preach the most, right. the ones that want the spotlight the most in yep. the church. Yeah. But now, let me let me ask you something. In the NBA now today, who do you uh, who do you see mostly in the NBA nowadays? Don't see. You better not see. Not the stars. <laughs> Definitely not the stars. Because I see LeBron. I can't stand LeBron. You see the stars. Give me more. <laughs> let, let me tell you who you see in the NBA. You see the nobodies playing the NBA. Yeah. You see right. those from different races yeah. playing the NBA. Yeah, different countries. And yeah. why is it that they're playing in the NBA nowadays? Because they come together. Right. Because the NBA recognizes their talents. The NBA recognizes their abilities, and the NBA scouts overseas. They scouts people in the streets. They scout right. people all over the world. And by them scouting and looking at them, by them looking at colleges, by them looking at high schools, no. they see, well, this person is doing good, and he's from this country. Or this person is from the street, and he ain't got a lick of money. No. So we're going to give them a chance. And what, okay, oh, what happens when the, when a nobody or when a person from another country comes and takes someone's spotlight? 
Uh oh, oh yeah, you don't, don't want to say it now. Well, okay, what happens? They get mad and upset. They get mad and right. upset. That's right. Now, I think with the church. Now, in the NBA Finals, in the 2018 NBA Finals, it was a couple of seconds left in the game. Now, we all know that the Warriors won. Hallelujah. Well, that. <laughs> I'm sorry, Cleveland Cavalier fans. <laughs> oh my God. LeBron James is the greatest basketball player right now in this generation. Oh, he's a queen. She likes LeBron. But <laughs> they, they're used to them getting calls. They're used to them having the ball all the time. Yeah. But they, the referee overturned the call. Now, at first, it was yep. an offensive foul, I believe. But then the call got reversed, the and worst. if you should have seen the interview Ooh. after the game, in game one, or game two, I believe, Talu was like, how are you going to reverse a call mm -hmm. like that? How are mm -hmm. you going to say one minute that one thing is allowed, but yet you do and say another thing? Man, quit cheating, I'm good. <laughs> but that's how it is in the church house nowadays. Right, right. That's how it is in the church yeah, house. Man. Yeah. Instead of us coming together and getting rid of a problem or getting rid of a situation, right. we go off and ignore it to the side. Yes. And that's especially a lot of us with the church of God in Pentecost. We ignore problems. We let things come on in the house yeah. of God. And especially yeah. in a church of God, if they done something wrong you know what happens the church of god does not get removed of their position the church of god pastor or preacher does not get uh their license to you know what happens they get sent to another church yeah. and i am sorry but if you are doing something wrong and it is not god approved right. i think you should have your license at least took away, and then, then you would have to earn your license back. Yeah, that's right. Amen. That's right. And we are not following the Bible. We're that's not right. following the Bible like we are. That's and that right. brings me to my third part. Do not, don't let God turn against you. Mm. Now, in here in the Bible, it says a lot about Miriam and Aaron, and it says about the Ethiopian woman. And for those of you all that don't know, the Ethiopian woman, she is a black woman. The yeah. Ethiopian woman right. is. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can argue and say that the Ethiopian woman is white. An Ethiopian woman is Latino. But an Ethiopian woman That's is black, woman. black, just like our color here. Yeah. Is black. And it says here in verse 9, And the anger of the Lord was kidding against him, and he right. departed. Mm -hmm. When you... Let God depart from you. That is one of the worst feelings that you could possibly have. Ooh, because man. when God departs from you, then you're pretty much just, it, oh, it's yeah. over with. You can yeah. repent all day. And you can say that you oh, are uh, uh, forgiven, that you want forgiveness. But when God gives you to the devil oh, a boy. reprobated mind, it's pretty much just all over. You might as well just go on and give yourself yeah. out to the devil. Mm -hmm. Because there's nothing you can do about that once you're turned over to the devil. And here's a, key, here's a key thing. Number one, in order for, if you don't want to turn away from God, pretty much just don't go against God's spirit. That's right. Pretty much, what is the definition of going against God's spirit? Going against God's spirit is mocking and making fun of the Holy Ghost. Going and mocking God's spirit Mocking God's people, mocking His salvation, mocking His deliverance, mocking His rejoice, mocking some, uh, making fun of somebody getting saved for the first time. Right. And yes, there is a lot of people, and especially around this area, that come to the altar, get saved, go back out there. Right. Come to the altar, get saved. And go back out there. Mm -hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of people that do do that, and they do take advantage of God's spirit like that. But there are some and few genuine people that want to give their life to God right. and that need to give their life to God. But the problem is they don't know how to give their life to God, mm -hmm. or they're bound by something mm -hmm. that yeah. makes them not want to give their life to God. And 
Oh, nine or ten times, like, for example, when Brother Ferguson says when someone's found with drugs and alcohol, is they can't get rid of it themselves. Right. They That's have right. to right. they have help. And right. a lot of people say, well, you know, I gave away drugs, I gave away a smoking cigarettes, I gave away drinking beer, I gave away a watching pornography, I gave away of a murdering or suicide or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But nine out of ten times, it's very hard to get rid of that addiction. No, yep. It is very yeah, hard yeah. and you need some yeah. help. Yeah. And that's yeah. the yeah. one thing that I talk about in the subject, why we all need to come together, especially as, as ministers of the gospel, is we see people that are drug uh, bound, mm -hmm. that are addicted to alcohol, that are addicted to uh, pornography, that are addicted to all things of the evil world. And instead of us combining together and doing something about it, oh, we want to talk about people. We yeah, want to talk about our brothers and right. sisters. Uh -huh. Oh, we want to say, well, they're taking advantage of the system. But I got news for you. When they see us leaders of the gospel, when they see us brothers and sisters come together, then they'll start to say, well, there is still hope for me. There is still help out there for me. There is still a change out there for me. And I'm glad that Moses got with an Ethiopian woman because he ignored the fact that he had to be in the same race. Mm -hmm. He came with a different race. He was like, you know what? I'm going to be with somebody from a different race, from a different country mm -hmm. that is. Mm -hmm. And I love the 90 Day Fiance show <laughs> because that is one of the funniest shows ever. And we, and we talk about 90 Day Fiance all the time. All the time. About, I thought of people from other countries, I thought people and counties were dumb, and like <laughs> as far as like going out and dating people and acting all stupid. I thought us far the county people was the only people that you know, do as far as like dating and like well because they marry someone and then they go on and divorce them and then they say, Well she is the love of my life. I love her so hey, never matter never matter one day. Yeah, I love her so I just can't get rid of her so much. She is my sweetheart. I thought about I thought us Harlem County was the only people. When I see Daddy Day Beyonce and see them from the city, I was like Okay, they act just as a bad, if not worse, worse. than us. We, we got system, do we? No. We got a very good sense here. But you know, with the 90 Day Fiance show, even though they do act stupid, they do act wild at times, they learn to come together. And they should see us come together in the church house. Amen, while. that's the truth. And they don't see us come together uh, in the church house. Mm -mm. And on the show with 90 Day Fiance, I love the fact that they go out to different countries and they go out with different races because they are breaking the bond of we got to be in the same race, got to right, be in the right. same uh, field or whatever. And let me tell you all something, uh, another history lesson before I close. Just another history lesson. They say uh, back in the Bible days that I can't quote the actual Bible scripture or the Bible verse, but the uh, Especially, I know there's one, two, three, four, five. Five people that are familiar with this church that we used to go to back in the day. Oh, Lord, yeah. They said, especially them. Yeah, five of us, yeah. Especially, yeah, because there's one, two, three, yeah, four, yes, Lord, five no, of really us don't, yeah. that went to the same church we all went there. at one time or another. And especially them, they said that, well, you know, they don't like the, they, mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Number, I, to, I told you this was a punishment message. I did not tell you it was going to be a punishment message. If they were to see, uh, because we got a great mixed couple here. If they were to, if we were all, if we all were to have a reunion and go up to that church, I'm they not going to say I'm going to go up to the church. Oh, yeah. But if we did, yeah, like Mom said, I'm going I'm to be nice about it because if there's people listening and stuff. <laughs> We'd be the ass to leave. Mm. But they said, and they try to quote this in the Bible, that, well, you know, when, uh, when God said 
that they had to go into the same, uh, you know, back in the Bible days when they had to go, they had to be in the same race, they had to be in the same country. That's because they had to be in the same country and the Lord wanted them to be in the same country. They wanted them to be in the same race. And let me just give you all a Bible lesson. Do you know the reason why that the Lord back in the day wanted the same race, to be with the same race, and he wanted people to stay in the same countries and everything? Is because the reason why is not because of because of racism or prejudice or not because that we was doing things bad. It was because they was worshiping false and idol gods. They was right. worshiping things that they were not supposed to be right. worshiping. They was letting things go that they was that not supposed to be right. letting go. Right. And that is the reason why that the Lord back in the day wanted them to be in the same race in the same uh, their same areas at that right. time. Uh -huh. It's because they was worshiping idols and worshiping gods and worshiping right. all the things that they was letting religions. stuff go. And the Lord had no choice but to straighten things up back in the days. But I am so glad and so thankful that we are not bound by slavery. I'm so glad and so able that we are not bound by blacks and whites only. I am so thankful that we are able to come together as a one. And I'm so glad that we are not bound by being just associated with just Baptists only or just associated with just Catholics or Methodists or... Pentecost or Church of God's only. I'm so yeah, glad that we all as a body of Christ can come together. Yes. Now it says in the Bible, it, it it don't say I remember it don't say that all people are accepted and that are able to be it doesn't say that there it doesn't say that white people, it doesn't say that black people right. are the only people that can accept Jesus Christ. That's right. It doesn't say nothing about right. Pentecost or Baptists yeah. right. can only be accepted uh, through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. It says all people, all people can accept the blood of Jesus Amen. Christ. Yes. All people yes. that want to come to yes. salvation can come and be accepted. And all people, it didn't say it didn't say short people. It didn't say people from Europe. It right. didn't say people from America. It didn't say people from Japan could go to heaven. It said all that accept the blood of Jesus Christ uh -huh. can go into heaven and be with him one day. Yes. And there's going to be a, a lot of people that's going to be <coughs> in hell. Right. But it's just the way it is. It's just about all what you want to do. And I thank the Lord so much because, like I said, this was not an easy message. If, if, it, if it was up to me, I would have preached John 14 and 1, verse 1. And because, like I said, when you preach a message, when a preacher or pastor preaches a message, it hits the preacher and pastor first. Yeah. Because the Lord is not going to give you a message for your benefit. Mm -hmm. The Lord is going to give you a message for the people. Mm -hmm. The Lord is going to give you a message to help somebody. The Lord is going to give you a message to encourage somebody. And the Lord loves everybody. everybody. He doesn't love just uh, the chairs. He just doesn't love the people that go to Lynch, Kentucky. He just doesn't love the people that are in California. He loves everybody. everybody. And that's why we all need to come together. And that's why we all need to be like a Moses and the, the Ethiopian woman. We all need to bind together. And I just want to thank the Lord for everything that he does for me and just thank the Lord for not a pretty message, but a rough message and a learning message. Mm -hmm. So that way we can be able to learn. And there's sometimes that we have great messages. There's sometimes we have bad messages. There's sometimes that we have shout down messages. Right. And then there's sometimes that we have listening and learning messages that we need to just right. sit back and listen and learn. Right. Don't get me wrong. It's great to shout and have a great shout down service in the Holy Ghost. It's great to have a worship service. Right. It's just about what the Spirit of God wants. Right. And when we talked about uh, uh, mixing together, uh, all of y'all just really hit my message earlier <laughs> today. And I'm so thankful for it. I want to thank you, Lord, right now for everything that you do for all of us, God. And Lord, 
we give you glory and honor and praise, God. And I know that this is not an easy message. This is a rough learning message. And Lord God, it is a teaching message that if we didn't know facts about the Bible or didn't know facts about history, God, now we know facts and now, God, we know what it takes, Lord, to bind together. And Lord, I am so sorry, God, if I disobeyed you in any way, God. I am so sorry if I got in the wrong spirit or anything, God. But Lord God, I believe, God, when you relate this message to me two days ago, that this message was from you, God. This message was from the Holy Ghost, God. I thank God that I'm saved, sanctified, filled with that sweet Holy Ghost. And I thank God that we're not bound, Lord, by blacks and whites only. I thank you, Lord, that we're not bound by slavery only. I thank God, Lord, that we are binding together, not only as brothers and sisters in Christ, but people all around the world. And I just want to give you glory and praise and honor. And Lord God, if I've offended somebody in any way, God, I apologize, but I am not apologizing for the Word of God, God. Because the Word of God is the Spirit and the truth. And if I don't preach the Word of God, Lord, I will be accountable for it. So, Lord God, I'm going to listen to the Spirit of God. I'm going to listen to you, Holy Ghost. And, and Lord, just let me be an encouragement. Let me be a help to somebody, God, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we give you honor, glory, and praise. Amen. 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 And Amen. if you're out there uh, listening right now, just... And if you want to accept salvation, if you want to come and bind together, if you want to say, well, I want to come with my brother and sister, but there's uh, something in the past that's uh, preventing me from that, or I want to come, all you got to do is just admit, believe, and confess. That's right. Amen. All you got to do is just say, I admit that you are the Lord and Savior. I believe that you're the Lord and Savior. And I confess that you're the Lord and Savior. And if you're out there, if you're listening around the world if you're out there right now just out in the congregation and if you need a touch from the lord we are here for you we are here to pray for you and we're not a church of men we are not a church of racism or prejudice we are not a church of baptist only or pentecost only or church right. god only we are a free spirit minded church that is working for you lord we are missionaries for you, God. And we just give you honor, glory, and praise, God. And I thank you for the message, the punishment of mocking spirits. And I hope that this message was a helping message. It was a learning message. And I hope that the message helped you in some way, in some form, in some fashion. And I want to thank God for Minister Princess Hall for allowing me to come and just minister the word of God. And I want to thank you, congregation, just for allowing me to be able to preach to you all, if nobody else. And I want to thank you, Lord, for allowing me to preach to myself, God, because this message is definitely for me, too. And for those that's out there listening, I just want to thank you all for listening. And we give you honor, glory, and praise. And I'll turn it back over to Minister Princess Holland. Let's give him a hand.